How to handle sales objections. Are you a coach or an entrepreneur who don't know what to say during the sales objections? Don't worry, you're not alone. I used to be on the same boat when I first started getting on sales calls. Today, I'm going to share with you what to say when there is an objection during your sales call. Make sure to stay until the end to learn the script to the most common sales objections. Hey, I'm Karma Hunter. I'm the owner of KarmaDNA.com. I help coaches, freelancers, and online entrepreneurs just like you get clients consistently without social media burnout so that you can scale with evergreen systems and strategies. In today's video, we're talking about sales objections and what to say when there is a sales objection. Do you say, okay, and just give up whenever your prospect tells you that they're going to think about it? Or you don't want to sound pushy or salesy by telling more and asking some more questions? Then this video is perfect for you. First of all, I want to tell you that you're missing out a lot. You can increase the conversion rate of your sales calls by effectively handling sales objections and without sounding pushy or salesy. With proper market research, you already found out the objections of your ideal client. Also, we already know about the most common sales objections that people have. It comes down to one thing. No matter what the objection is, it's almost always about the value. Their values and the value they see in your product or services. Think about it. People pay thousands of dollars on designer bags, shoes, iPhone, but they're hesitant in paying $27 on a course or a digital product. Or in my perspective, I would pay thousands of dollars on a coach who's going to give me the step-by-step strategy of a certain specific problem that I have, but I won't pay even $50 an hour to someone who's telling me that they're going to help me live my best life because I don't see the value in it. When it comes to sales objections, the most important thing is your prospect being clear and seeing the value in your offer. So whenever there's an objection, make sure that you're clear with your offer. So what are the most common sales objections? The first thing you're going to hear is, I need to think about it. Here's what I say to that. Okay, I hear that. Most of the time, whenever someone says that they need to think about it, it's, about two reasons. They either can't afford it or they don't think it's going to work for them. Which one is it for you? By asking these questions, I am opening it up for her to tell me what really is that she's hesitant about. And a lot of times the answer could be, I can't afford it. Just like we said earlier, it's almost never about the money. It's about the value. Some of my clients had the same fear. I also had the same fear when it came to investing on some of the things. Our fears around money and affordability is usually us trying to hold ourselves back from really committing to getting the success we need. Because at the end of the day, we know it's going to be hard work and we're comfortable. We're going to have to get out of our comfort zone. And that's not something easy to commit for everyone. So let me ask you, if you really committed and took action with my support and mentorship and with the tools that I'm going to give to you, do you think you can achieve this goal? And they can only say yes or no to this. And if it is a yes, then that's a sell. If it's a no, they may have some doubts about you. This is when you can talk about your clients who got results before, your own achievements, any social proof that you can show to build trust. Now, remember we said it's usually two things, either I can't afford it or it won't work for me. Let's say the answer was, 
it won't work for me. So if your prospect tells you that it won't work for them, you can again approach it the same way. It is because of their fear of commitment. So again, you can tell them that they're not alone. A lot of people feel this way before they start such a program or such a journey. So again, you can ask them, do you think it would work for you if you actually committed and taken consistent action with my support and mentorship and the tools that I'm going to be given to you? You think it will work then? If you're a good fit for each other, meaning that if your prospect truly believes that you can give them results, it will almost always going to be a yes. So now you know what to say whenever you have those most common sales objections. And I encourage you to start practicing about what you want to say whenever you get these sales objections. And this way you can increase your conversion rate of your sales calls. I hope this information was helpful to you. Let me know what part of the script you like the best. See you next time.